I've been looking for a way to make Grey Knights work competitively for a while now, and after a lot of trial and error, I was finally able to pick up 300 points clean on my local RTT event, and now I'm ready to share with you how to make Grey Knights work competitively on the tabletop. So, oh, strength first. Grey Knights were always the tricky army in the Warhammer 40,000. At some editions they were a bit more straightforward, some they were a bit less. Now they are extremely tricky compared to most others. They are active in all phases. Uh, well, there is no psychic phase anymore, but they sort of have their own psychic phase, as we'll discuss later. And they do require extra planning and diligence when playing. However, they do reward you if you do that. They are arguably one of the most, if not the most, mobile factions in the game, and certainly one of the most unpredictable ones. And these two qualities, as you can probably tell from all of my other videos, are very important to make an army stand out competitively. Though don't get your hopes too high yet, because there are things that bring them uh, down a bit, and that's why their win rates will probably not be anywhere close to Eldar or GSC levels of pre-nerf times. Their movement tricks are almost limitless. There is no end to them. They can teleport three units a turn using the teleport strike army rule, which essentially means you pick up three units at the end of your opponent's turn. These can be almost any units apart from maybe land raiders and rhinos. And uh, then you set them up normally as if, as if they were coming from deep strike uh, outside of nine from your opponent's units. But there is no such thing as out of position from for Grey Knights. They can always be again in position. It's just a question of whether you can get them into perfect position or just okay one. They can dip strike within three inches using the prognosticated arrival strategy for one command point. They can auto advance six inches and get fly with that. That's their detachment rule. They can have reactive movement for six inches or go into reserves. They can shoot and scoot on the interceptor. So if essentially uh, interceptors fly 12, then shoot and move another six inches and they could have even advanced before that, and we'll discuss the combo a bit later. Uh, you can also get the 6-inch charge from Deep Strike using Drago. There are also enhancements that give you extra mobility. So all this makes them essentially one of the best, if not the best, scoring army in the game. Only problem with scoring for Grey Knights is that you actually need to stay on the objectives to, in order to score them, as you probably know. So for those objectives that are not mm, easily accessible by your opponent, and there are some, depending on how they position themselves, for those objectives you are golden. However, if you need to contest objectives, that's where your durability comes in. But Grey Knights are quite good with that as well. Talking about durability, the whole army is 2 plus armor save army wide, so you you will not have problems with any small arms fire and even some heavier stuff you will be able to shrug off quite often using your armor of contempt but if something has too high of an ap don't worry because all of your terminators have four plus invulnerable saves as terminators should of course, you have Armor of Contempt here, so you can get yourself up to 0 plus save and cover, which will get you very reliable saves, even against AP2 and AP3. By the way, if you want to win more games of 40k and you want me to personally look at your roster and figure out what may be wrong with it and what improvements we might make to it, check out the links in the description for my Patreon, where you can get all that help. Now, weaknesses. As I said, there are some things that don't work that well with Grey Knights, so shooting is one of them. They are very, very limited in that field, so uh, even though I said they're active in all phases, uh, the shooting phase is probably the one where you do least damage, which is not great in the edition where shooting is probably the best way to deal damage to your opponent. Their biggest gun uh, is a heavy side cannon on the Dread Knight, which is strength 10, AP 1, and damage 3, and that's nothing to write home about. Worst part about this gun, obviously, is the AP 1, which is uh, laughable, considering that the most of the tanks will have 2 plus save and will be in cover, so they will be just ignoring all of this stuff that you are sending their way. And no, I'm not counting the Land Raider, because Land Raider does not synergize with the army whatsoever, so I'm not going to talk about it. And the shooting part does limit Grey Knights quite significantly because they would like to jump around the opponent doing damage uh, in the shooting phase and staying as far as possible but still being on the objectives and only getting into combat when necessary. At least that's how I think Grey Knights would feel the best. Unfortunately, they sometimes have to do the heavy duty work in melee. 
And even though they are potent in melee, they do have a problem cracking anything that is toughness 12 or has 2 plus save, and god forbid it has both. And as you can tell, a lot of tanks are just that. It means that you'll have to plan your damage allocation very carefully, and I have uh, ran into problems like that on tournaments where I thought that I will be able to kill a tank, and then I invest some of my firepower, then more, then more, and the tank doesn't die, and then I charge it and it still doesn't die, and then I get shot into pieces because uh, Grey Knights, even though they're durable, they're not invincible. So be careful with that really measure out how much you need to invest and do invest a bit more than that because you've probably underestimated your opponent's roles. They are very expensive. They're not abysmally so because uh, they've been discounted quite substantially in the previous monitoring field manual, but enough to feel whenever you are losing stuff. They are essentially on that pre-custodies level now where it's not almost 20 or 30 guys on the board, but you're close to that. And as you start building your list around Terminator Bricks, which you will probably have to, as we'll discuss later, they are the best unit you have access to, uh, you may start feeling low on chaff units, which you really need because you don't want your opponent's first hit on you to be into a 500-point Terminator Brick unless you've really, really planned it and calculated how much damage they'll do. And lastly, this one is not really a problem of the army itself, it's just something that for you to keep in mind. They are a very, very high skill level army. They do most of their damage in the fight phase, which is really hard to master, especially now when things have changed and there are a lot more limitations to how the fight phase proceeds. And you have to plan ahead a turn or sometimes even more of what you're going to do with your units. And you still have to keep in mind the score and you don't have reliable shooting. So a lot of factors to keep in mind. And that really makes Grey Knights a tough army to wrap your mind around. So the most important part, the army composition. We'll start with the basics. Our strike squads. The strike marines were the staple of Grey Knights list for as long as I can remember them. And they were always the support piece that was always very, very good, relatively cheap for Grey Knights and uh, was extremely useful for the game purposes for scoring and they are still that they are cheap they are relatively durable because they also have two plus save uh, they have scout six which sometimes comes in handy if you, you want to get your squad moving to towards an objective or you don't want to position them in such a place uh, where your opponent can shoot them in the deployment phase but then you want to move them out somewhere it's a difficult thing to explain but sometimes it, it comes in handy most importantly, they are your Grey Knights units that you can throw around performing actions, doing secondaries for you, capturing objectives using your prognosticated rival and so on and so forth. They are that unit that you want to move around. You don't want to do that with a 500 point Terminator brick unless it's just the perfect place to do that, which sometimes happens. And then we essentially don't have much of a choice and need to start adding meat and bones and fat to our list. So Terminator squads are going to be just that. They have wonderful OC. So they are OC2 base, which is OC3 with the Ancient, which is free, so you always take him. Uh, they have lethal hits on the charge, which, which helps somewhat against the uh, T10, especially T12 targets. It means essentially that you're not just bouncing off the T12, targets you're actually starting to chip away at them probably not still not killing them but doing some damage if you especially if you roll well enough on the sixes on the hit roll they have apothecary so you can revive a model every command phase and that's very very good because a terminator costs 42 points each i think and uh, it means that you are gonna get within two turns you're gonna get three 80 points Debates of MSU, Terminator Bricks versus 10-man Bricks, rage all over Reddit community, Grey Knights community, still, uh, ever since the uh, Codex, sort of, the Index came out. Uh, but I think both are viable. 
10 man is good because of the CB efficiency, because if you want to use Armor of Contempt, you only spend one CB to defend the entire squad, uh, including the character. You uh, spend one CP to move them six inches uh, using the Mists of Daimos. So all of that stuff is very efficient when you are using that on a 10 man brick compared to a five man where it's twice uh, as expensive for you. And also you give Apothecary more chances to get guys back up because the chance of the entire squad being killed in one go is uh, less. However, the MSU gives you more character spots so you can fit more support characters and protect them, uh, which can be a problem as you will see a bit later. Uh, they give you extra mobility because you have more squads. They give you more Apothecary. So if uh, such a turn happens when you lose a couple of models from each squad, which in my <laughs> experience doesn't happen that often unfortunately usually most good players they try to focus on one target and only kill that and uh, it means that you want to have as much durability in that one particular place as possible that's why i personally tend to gravitate more towards the 10-man style oh no i think that you just have to have at least one 10-man brotherhood terminator brick with drago because like if you don't why you're playing gray knights that's the, that's the unit to have and other units can be msu paladins are essentially a side grade of terminators i would really really love them to be the that ultimate terminator unit that they were in eighth edition for those of you who don't remember that in eighth edition paladins used to be the only terminators in the game who were three wounds there were alars which were they were four wounds i think back in the day so but they were custodies terminators they were always better than everyone else but the regular adeptus astartes terminators were all two wounds each and paladins were the only ones because they are like the best they each are essentially a character in and of itself and they were the only ones who had three wounds they hit on twos i think or no the paragon did hit on twos and the regular guys hit on threes and they were just this extremely elite terminator unit and i would love them to be that but unfortunately now there is really a very hard argument uh, whether you should take paladins or terminators and as, as i said they are the side grade so they give you give you more durability but less longevity because you don't get the apothecary you only get the ancient so if you it's harder to kill them but once they're dead they're dead unlike the terminators which can stand back up over time their melee is better against low toughness because they essentially have the same four attacks each with strength six ap2 damage two however they hit on twos instead of threes like the terminators but they don't get the lethal hits on the charge so they are worse much worse against high toughness they have much better shooting because they get can get extra three psych cannons onto the squad and i like them as a 10-man unit to soak firepower if i really want to do that and sometimes uh, your opponent just doesn't give you a choice you have to put someone on the objective and hold it and uh putting a strike team there will not bring you any closer to victory because they'll be just shot off off there and you will not be able to score those points and sometimes you just need to stay on that objective and for that paladins are probably the best because they are the hardest thing point for point to kill their minus one to wound rule really comes into effect when you're being shot with something like strength 9 AP, high AP damage 3 guns, which really want to wound you on 3s or even 2s. And the difference between being uh, wounded on 2s or 3s is a massive one. The Dread Knights. I made, I, tr I tried to make them work, but unfortunately they're just too weak for the points, too anemic in terms of their damage output to be used. They have the most wonderful rule, which is they can advance and charge, they can shoot and advance, they can fall back and shoot and charge. So they can do everything. And they are very fast, especially considering that you automatically advance six. And with this kind of a rule, you are always just a couple of a dozen points away from being wonderful and i think dread knights will be great when they are something like 140 points but at the current price of 185 i think they are 
they are still too expensive. They are a fire magnet, but a bad one. Unlike paladins who will soak up firepower, for example, in that tournament I mentioned before, in the first round I was playing against Chaos Knights, and uh, the Chaos Knight army sent almost all of their firepower down into the paladins and just several good four up invulnerable save rolls and because of the minus one to wound they had and because of minus one to hit they get from Voldus, which was in the in the squad they survived the shooting phase very well and only lost something like four dudes this would not happen with Dread Knights. That Dread Knight would be dead because uh, whenever a Melta would come through the Invulnerable save, it would just do like six or seven damage sometimes and the Dread Knight would be dead in two or three failed saves. I'm really, really waiting for it to become great again. Unfortunately, not at the current state. The Grandmaster Nemesis Dread Knight is a similar story because yes, he is better. He's not as anemic in combat because he even though his hammer obnoxiously still hits on fours which is idiotic as it is on the regular dread knights but just on grandmaster it's even worse even more stupid uh but unfortunately you don't get the delivery with him so with dread knights you at least can actually get to your opponent with the 14 inch move uh, which is an 18 inch move and a 6 inch advance after which you can shoot and charge so it's essentially a 14 inch move but the grandmaster doesn't have that so you get extra firepower extra uh, melee output because of the full rerolls to hit wound and damage once per battle round against vehicles and monsters which is wonderful but you don't get to apply that damage because how will you walk eight inches at a time towards your opponent when your opponent can shoot at you and they will because they know it's a grandmaster who costs more than 200 points and why not he's not that survivable yes you can put sigil of exigence on him but what's the point if you are still gonna end up within a nine inch charge of your opponent again so you're not probably not charging in again and that is the problem i have with the grandmaster dead nemesis dread knight even though i really really like the model again Four characters. We have two must-have choices. Calder Drago, we've already mentioned, for the 6-inch charge of Deep Strike, out of Deep Strike, and Librarians. You need them, period. Uh, they do mortal wounds uh, within 18 inches of the model. Uh, you roll a 2+, plus and uh, you do 2d3 model mortal wounds to the target, which is very good. It's uh, rather reliable for, for as far as mortal wounds go. On a 6+, plus, you do 2d6 mortal wounds, which does sometimes kick off and you can just do crazy damage uh, but on the one you do d6 damage to yourself your own squad and the funny fact is even though they have four up shrug against uh, psychic damage which would apply to this um, uh, vortex ability however it only works if you are in a squad so if you're using lone librarians like i did uh, partially then sometimes their heads will be would be exploding and on that tournament I mentioned, there was a funny situation where my librarian rolled a 1 and rolled a 3 for the motor wounds. And my opponent was hoping that he's going to kill himself, but he didn't. And then next turn, uh, the time comes for this librarian to roll for his vortex ability. And uh, my opponent's like, please, please roll a 1. And, and then, of, of course, I roll a 1. And uh, he's like, oh yeah, finally, finally he's going to die. And I am rolling d6 mortal wounds on him. And I roll a 1, so my librarian leaves on one wound remaining, which is very funny, and usually it will not be like that. Usually you will kill your librarian at least from the second try, but maybe even from the first if you roll 5+. plus. But believe me, they are worth it, because more often than not, you will be doing that crazy damage to your opponent's units, and that is your best reliable way to do damage to high toughness high save targets at range chaplains are good for plus one to wound on paladins because paladins struggle into armor they would also be uh, nice for the terminators but just usually you will not have the space to fit in the chaplain in uh, for the paladins he's probably one of the better characters you can uh, get for them Voldus is my personal preference just because i want to reinforce their durability and his minus one to hit is nice to stack on the paladins
Interceptors are interesting. I initially thought that they are a bit redundant with their movement abilities because you are getting so much movement in this army. Why do you want that 12 inch move and the move after they shoot? But I realized that as you are using the movement shenanigans, there's really no such thing as too many movement shenanigans. And that's why sometimes you will need to use their six inch move after they shoot rule, which we'll see in the synergy section. And there are some crazy out of phase combos you can do that your opponent will be very unhappy about and will want to clarify that with a TO, which is always funny to see. Purifiers, they are nice. Unfortunately, they're a bit too expensive for my taste because you pay 335 points with Crow and you don't run them without Crow. And uh, killing infantry isn't really a problem for your army, I think. So that's why I'm personally not using them, but I've seen people have success with them. And uh, if you are playing often against hordes, and stuff like that, they may be very influential towards your success. The special characters. Obviously, Kaldo Drago is the beefy Terminator character we all want and love, and he's just the boss. Uh, seven Moons, G5, 2 plus save, 4 plus invulnerable save. So he is a bit beefier than the regular Terminator captain. Uh, carries a Titan Sword, which is great. It's 6 attacks at strength 8, 8 AP 4, damage 3. And he's just a Gravis Marine Killer because of that high AP 4. So if you run him into something like Eradicators, he will just crush their souls. Uh, the reason you take him, obviously, is not that. It's uh, the 3 plus 3 to the charge roll. And it's extremely important for the Grey Knight's playstyle. You need to have that reliable delivery for your 10-man brick into the heart of your opponent's army, and that's why you take him. There is just no reason not to. He also gives 4 plus uh, feel no pain against mortal wounds to his squad. Obviously not as relevant now that devastating wounds are not mortal wounds, but still nice occasionally against some psychic shenanigans, so like the librarians I've mentioned, or uh, maybe explosions happening nearby. Grandmaster Voldus, uh, again, as I said before, he is there for the minus one to hit ability for the big brick of Terminators. He fights rather well himself, as he always did, especially I remember the times in 8th edition, he was just the most badass character you could, could find on the uh, land of 40k. So he has five attacks now at strength 10, AP 2, damage 3. So he will be doing rather well into a lot of different data sheets. Uh, he does well against Terminators, he does well against Gravis, he does rather well against some monsters, especially T9 monsters uh, with a uh, not 2 plus save, and so on and so forth. So he can be quite beneficial. And obviously, stacking with Paladins minus 1 to wound, he gives them very, very good durability. And he also deals D3 mortal wounds on a 4 plus every activation in the fight phase, which is D3 plus 3 wounds if you roll a 6. He costs 95 points, so he's relatively cheap for what he does. That's what I also like about him. The cast on Crow is essentially an upgrade for the purifiers. I just don't see them as uh, two separate units. I see them as one thing. And give, uh, he gives them plus one attack on their purifying flame ranged attack, which brings them to four attacks each, which is 40 per squad, at strength 4, AP 1, damage 1, ignoring cover. Uh, that is a nice profile because it has anti-infantry 2+, plus. so whatever you are trying to wound that is infantry is going to be uh, in a sorry state. However, that AP 1 and damage 1 is the problem here, and it would mean that you do seven more seven wounds to a Terminator squad or without armor of contempt, or 3.7 with armor of contempt. So nothing really to write home about because if I think that I need to deal with an infantry unit, if I really need a dedicated anti-infantry squad, I want that anti-infantry squad to be able to kill stuff that I really cannot kill otherwise, like, for example, Terminator Bricks. And unfortunately, this is just not it. This is a horde killing unit or something of that sort, uh, but not the tough unit killers as I think they should be. Still Crow fights rather well, uh, 5 attacks of strength, 6 AP, 2 damage, 2 with precision and dam wounds, so he's like a nice uh, fighty champion and uh, I like that about him, plus the model is a very very cool, it's a new model, the only new model the Grey Knights have ever since the Voldus in 2016 if I remember correctly, so yeah, he, he looks rather nice. Now the synergies, so as I uh, described before, 
interceptors are extremely tricky because they can even bypass some nasty things for example uh, if your opponent is um, experienced at playing gray knights and armies like that they will be ringing their objectives uh, so setting up units in such a way on the objectives especially a home objective uh, that you will not be able to set up within three of them and on the objective so you cannot steal the objective from them and I've, I've seen some people do that so because they know there are units that can deploy within three inches however if you are playing interceptors you can use the prognosticated rival for one cp deploy within three inches then shoot at the unit of your big brain opponent and then be on the objective because you move six inches towards them and set your interceptors on the objective your interceptors only have oc1 so you will need to kill someone from that uh, unit depending on the size of the unit and the oc they have with your bolters and you may want to have a maybe a flamer in your squad just to bring that damage a bit higher but in any case that will give you an option to deal with that especially that can be very nice if you've drawn the card to get the home objective of your opponent which is which costs eight victory points so you really want to do that and uh, that is probably the only way you'll be able to do that otherwise they can also sometimes go through the blockade of the infiltrators but in a very specific scenario where the infiltrators are sort of uh, tiptoeing the objective and you deploy uh, within 12 of the infiltrators outside of 12 sorry of the infiltrators uh, and then you move shoot them and move six inches towards the objective and as the objective has a slightly bigger than seven inches uh control zone if the interceptor inter infiltrators sorry are on the other side of the objective from your interceptors uh, you will be able to get onto that objective and potentially steal that from your opponent because infiltrators as far as i remember only have oc1 so it's not unreasonable you can also move them up to 24 inches in a turn because first you move then you advance and then in order to activate your uh, shoot and move ability you need to spend the cp on death uh, from the warp which gives you assault and plus one to hit then you shoot them and move extra six inches and that again sometimes can be quite beneficial if when your opponent doesn't really uh, expect you to get from a to b so fast yes you can teleport that way uh, but sometimes again because of screening the teleportation may not be the choice you want to use also the grenades have uh, the enhancement which is called first to the fray and the idea on the enhancement is nice uh, you can come from reserves on turn one so if you have something in reserves it, you can use it turn one if you could do that with drago squad that would be just nuts however unfortunately no one else can join the squad along with drago so you're stuck using that for someone else and because of that you will not get a reliable charge that's why i'm not using that and also you cannot stack that with rapid ingress as far as i can see from the rulings uh all over the place just because of how the wording is so that enhancement has a nice idea to it but unfortunately it's not very usable the 10 man strike squad with the brotherhood champion inside a rhino can be a very annoying objective holding package you park the rhino behind the line of sight then move it and disembark the squad onto the objective behind the ruin and because of brotherhood champion they have fight first so they become a very big problem if you charge them you'll get hit with 30 attacks at strength 6 ap2 damage 2 if you shoot them they can use six draw of exigence which is probably the best thing for your opponent to do but hopefully they cannot see you with good guns and situationally can be very very good a good asset to have one cp mists of deimos that i mentioned already before it's essentially a reactive movement when you move uh six inches away or go into reserves if your opponent ends up uh, ends a move or any kind uh within nine inches of your squad and that is going to disrupt a lot of plans of your opponents for example when they want to capture an objective by charging uh your squad that is on the objective and uh, they are say five inches away from the objective six inches away from your squad and they're like okay that's an easy charge i'm just gonna charge you kill you and get the, the objective and then what you do is at, as soon as they end the move you're like okay now i'm gonna move away from you or into reserves and then they are not able to come to actually declare you as a charge and it means they will have to stay there and not be on the objective which is 
quite good. A 2CP Haloed and Soulfire is a great way to protect your big squad if you manage to pull off a charge on one flank and then teleport away from that flank at the end of your opponent's turn. In practice, unfortunately, it doesn't really work that way usually because your opponent tends to stick all together and if you charge one part of that blob, uh, you usually get attacked by the other surviving part of the blob. So I've never actually been able to use this 2CP uh, stratagem in this fashion, though I really like to mention it to the, my opponents because when they hear that I can make a Terminator unit essentially a lone op for two command points, uh, they are like, Oh, wow, that sounds dangerous. And it does sound dangerous. Unfortunately, it's just not really applicable to the game in most cases. But if you mention it, your opponent has to think about that. And that's usually beneficial for competitive purposes. Now the roster example. So we have the two Brotherhood Librarians that are lone librarians and one Brotherhood Librarian who joins the squad with Inescapable Wrath just because of points. This is the plus one to the charge roll enhancement. Uh, the Grandmaster Voldus who joins Paladins. Galator Caldo Drago, the Warlord, who joins a 10-man Brotherhood Terminator squad with two Psychonans, Banner and an Arthesium on the Apothecary. Five-man Brotherhood Terminator squad for that one Librarian. Uh, five-man Strike squad, five-man Strike squad, obviously to hold objectives because they have sticky objectives, so they are very good at that. If your opponent doesn't have any redeploys, anything in reserves, you can just forget about your objective uh, from turn two and just start teleporting all over the board being uh, knowing that you still control the objective in the deployment zone five man interceptor squad for all the nonsense that you can do with them and obviously the 10 man paladin squad with the psychans i highly recommend the psychans instead of flamers on most units especially the paladins because they have two plus ballistic skill so they shoot and fight equally well so you want to use the weapon that actually cares about ballistic skill on them in most other cases, I also like the Psychans just because we don't get a lot, as uh, you've noticed, probably of high strength guns and strength 8 is at least somewhat high strength. Uh, that's why I always choose the Psychans. Well, that is essentially it. The Grey Knights are there to jump around your opponent, capture objectives, do secondaries, and then when the time comes, charge do a reliable charge with Drago or someone else who survived all of the firepower using all of your movement tricks and your durability tricks and hopefully capitalize on that and crush your opponent. That is how you play Grey Knights. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.